as Nigerians anxiously await the 2023 presidential election, major contestants gunning for the number one seat in the country have been playing up their manifestos. While some see security issues as paramount, others are keen on uniting the country they perceive to have divided along ethnic and religious lines. Arise analyst Kayode Otsutoji joins us now to speak on what each candidate sees as more important to Nigerians as they campaign to win the souls of the most populated black nation. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, always Good afternoon. a pleasure to be here with you. Now, I, so I look at it as the pan-Nigerian, the one who feels he has paid his dues, and the underdog is the way I define it. Now, uh, in the past 24 hours, uh, with uh, the, the outing at uh, the, Arewa, um, the Arewa outing, a lot has emerged concerning manifestos, plans, ideas, visions. What are some of your initial thoughts? Yes, while uh, APC is still being awaited to unfold its manifesto, it shows that the three candidates really have really brought out the nucleus or the nuclei of their manifesto at the Arewa Forum. Um, Arewa Forum had really presented an opportunity, you know, for the candidates to come at different time. Um, Atiku on Saturday, then um, Tinobu and Obi yesterday, Monday. And, um, you see that all of them have almost the same thing, you know, how to improve the welfare, how to solve problem of security, how to make uh, youth employable, how to industrialize. But each two added, you know, its own, you know, peculiarity. Like uh, Chinumbu said, yes, it will solve security problem by uh, equipping the institutions and the training and apart from equipment we provide all the necessary things okay then he, he mentioned that uh, we will bring up you know economic drivers um, like you know uh, digital economy you know um, Sports, 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 entertainment, all the things that we bring the best out of the youth. Obi believes, you know, employment, 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 that if job is created, you know, youth will be occupied with game footings, and by so doing, they won't be amenable to, you know, serve as tools for insecurity. And uh, apart from that too, he emphasized, you know, strengthening the uh, security institutions and what have you. Um, um, Atiku, Atiku, apart from the general, you know, uh, points that is common to all of them, he, he mentioned that he will revive you know, our industries, and particularly you will bring back to life, you know, the, the textile industry in Kaduna. Uh, but the three of them didn't go without uh, bring some peculiarities mm. that had really, you know, made them uh, the talk of the town, most especially in the social media. Uh, the, maybe, many, many points of that nature. Yeah, I yeah. would say, um, Mr. Tsojou, when he came to Bola Tunubu, he hinted on state police. And I was wondering what your thoughts on that would be, especially since we've seen what, you know, you know President Mamadou Buhari's stance on that. So it, it, in a way, it seemed like an effort on his part to distance himself, you know, to show that even though it's the same party, it might not necessarily be the same experience. No, I think what he said about state police is that mm -hmm. State police is desirable, but yes. it's not something he can do. He has to look at what is in the Constitution exactly. and how to 
employ, uh, you know, so exploit it, you I know, agree. for advantage. But he, there's a reason he, but he brought that to the fore, you know, in other, in addition to other issues that were highlighted. So, in a way, it does sound okay. like he's hinting, like he's somewhat open to yeah, that. Yeah. So, you think this might also give him an edge when it comes to, you know, maybe securing votes, especially what we're seeing the current um, governor of Benue State facing with his own push for state police. You see what. The conclusion I've reached mm -hmm. is that we are lucky to have three competent people. Either of them is okay. Interesting. Either of them is okay in the sense that insecurity, all of them mention it. Mm -hmm. And the main problem of Nigeria today is insecurity. You can't travel, you are, could be kidnapped, you could be, you, you, you get my point. Mm -hmm insecurity. Though the president has changed the, you know, uh, the sphere of uh, security now since about two months when he pledged that there will be change. We have seen, you know, dramatic change in the sense that uh, the security um, uh, agencies and uh, whatever now read correctly and positively for Nigeria, you know, the body language of the president. Whereas before, it just kept moot. It didn't, when you are crying, it didn't say much. And people thought that, you know, silence means consent. Even the security uh, bodies like army, uh, uh, police and whatever. But now he has now voiced it out that, you know, crush the enemy. And uh, mm. since then, there has been change. Which, if you want me to enumerate, I can give two or three. Let's, uh, yeah. Before we go, we, we go in that direction, uh, let's shift our focus slightly. Uh, you, you know, Peter Obi granted an interview at some point saying that the reason he hasn't launched a manifesto document is because uh, as Nigerians, we're great at talking about ideas. Everybody will have a lot of ideas to throw into the conversation. However, the question is who is most likely to achieve. And uh, on the back of that, there's been a lot of discussion as well about the track records of each of the candidates. They've all served in governance in various capacities in the past. Now, uh, when we look at them, e again, each of them do refer reference back to their experience in office. Granted this, and with the current position that Nigeria is in, who do you feel gave the most convincing a motivation uh, that their track record and where they've come from. Uh, for example, you know, everybody spoke about the North and how the North is, so to speak, the seat of wealth. And everybody spoke about the agricultural revolution that needs to happen in the North. Uh, however, not everybody is as competent as the other to, to drive that. So in your opinion, from the outing, wh who, who do you want think? me to take first? The, the ball is in your court? No. So just yeah, let's start with uh, <laughs> let's let's start with Atiku. Okay, Atiku, definitely he has been vice president, vice president of Nigeria, and uh, he was the chairman of uh, privatization, with exception of president. Uh, oh no, with exception of head of state, that's uh, Babangida. No one has really done more than Obasanjo Atiku when it comes to privatization. People will be saying, yes, but when you look at where you are coming from, and you know where you find yourself there, you will know that actually they did a lot. Babangida, in fact, opened up the economy to the extent that around uh, 1992, 1993, and beyond, if you are selling ordinary showing stick, you will make it. And young people that were jobless before, you know, they became self-employed. Even when you are selling mash, mashes, you make it. And that was when employment now shifted away from government job, ministry job, and whatever. You see some people move into car dealership. 
they were like mm. uh, you know like selling used cars and things were were were, were fine. So during uh, Obasanjo Atiku, they did very well in that area because Atiku himself is an industrialist. Now. We move to who's next? Uh, uh, Tinubu, sorry, very okay, quickly. Tinubu, very quickly, okay, Mr. Tinubu, yes. You gave him a Tinubu, big one. <laughs> Tinubu is <laughs> leveraging on what he did in Lagos. And everyone wants to live in Lagos. If you want to live in Nigeria, you want to live in Lagos. So see, he's believing. And uh, experience is the best master. So if he can extrapolate what he did in Lagos, you know, for Nigeria at large, investing, borrowing money, starting what we call concessioning or projects that ordinary budget cannot meet. You know, it, it will be fantastic. Peter will be, everybody knows that actually he worked under a very tight political climate. Okay, the Uba, Uba brothers, and all sorts of things, the Otokoto and what, and he was still able to, you know, uh, achieve what he achieved. Though there is an area I, do, I didn't agree with him. Leaving so much money in the bank. He said he left about 25 mm. billion, 25 billion in one, 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 three banks. Are you, are you, were, were you, were you, were you elected to come and save money or you are? elected to use money for infrastructure and better the life of the people. If he's elected as president, you should know that that aspect of, hey, I'm a fund manager by putting money in the bank, that's not. You have to borrow money for capital okay. projects, not consumption projects. Anyway, he believes in production, not consuming. But both must go pari passu. If you produce and nobody is consuming, the economy won't grow because there won't, there won't be the multiplier effect. That, you know. And thank you so much. Now, when it comes to the peace accord, you, we saw that um, yeah. um, Atiko Babaka sees that moment to condemn the attack on his supporters, asking the president to call his supporters into order. I'm just wondering... What measures do you think need to be put in place in order to safeguard the implementation of the peace accord? Because it doesn't look like anyone is respecting this. And things might actually go from bad to worse because any opportunity that presents itself, we see them taking little swipes at each other, which I, I, could I incite think, I think, I think it's wrong for them to be playing the politics of ethnicity or region. Or, or, or region. Within the last one week, the three of them, actually had displayed that myopic, you know, trait. Mm. Uh, Atiku said, don't vote for any other tribe. Don't vote for a uh, candidate of Yoruba or Igbo. Um, uh, Tinumbu said, yes, is the turn of the Yoruba. Mm -hmm. And when it gets to the Yoruba, Emiloka, I'm the one that, you know, is, uh, is, should be favored. Then, um, Ubi, he said, when you are thinking of Igbo, don't vote for me because I'm Igbo. Vote for me because of my character. Mm -hmm. You get my point? Mm -hmm. So when you look at the three of them, from those statements, from the perspective of ethnicity or region where you come from, I think it would be it's better. Yes, but I'm talking about safeguarding the peace accord, but we can, oh, we can oh, take oh, up this discussion. No. We can actually... Really, up, really, we have, we have the peace uh, committee, uh, which they signed. Mm -hmm. If things should degenerate beyond what it is, they should call them back. Absolutely. Yeah, on that note, I, I hope we can expand on that conversation yeah, yeah. at another given opportunity. Mr. Kayode Otutoju, Arise Analyst, thank you so much for your time as always. Thank you.